Hey everybody, it's Angelo from Angelo's Workbench. Welcome back to video number two in the 1972 Ford Maverick Grabber 3D printed. I'm going to get right to work. Next up is a couple of things. I'm going to uh, prepare the uh, taillights, well the taillight bezels anyway, and the headlights. And uh, in the front grille there's some lights that I'm going to do with a chrome pen. And, uh, and I'm going to prepare the wheels. I have to do those little black parts, which is always unnerving to me because it's very fine paintwork. So I've got these little chrome markers that I found on Amazon that were very reasonably priced. Uh, and, uh, and they work wonderfully. And you get five of them in three different sizes. Uh, and, and I think I paid something like... Uh, 11 bucks, 12 bucks for these. And uh, and as I said, they uh, they work fantastically. So um, comparable to Molotow at a substantially lesser price. Okay, I'm going to need a smaller one to get in the center of that bezel. But you can see how nice that does. Like, it does a fantastic job. Can't complain. Can't complain. So let's see here. I am going to need a smaller one to get in the inside of that. I grabbed the biggest one. And it's doing a good job on the outer edges. No problem. That looks great. And it'll probably do a great job on these headlights too. And I was right, it is doing a great job on those headlights. And I will just set those aside to cure. These chrome pens have uh, revolutionized the way model builders do chrome, at least for me. The finish is a little fragile, you have to be careful. Um, so I'm always hesitant to use it on like window trims and things like that. I. But uh, if you're not going to touch it, then it'll be fine. The durability is the weakness. But uh, for the cost and for the result, I mean, you really can't, really can't complain. And right after I stopped the camera, it started working, so... Now I can color in the centers of this light. There we go. That looks great. And we can also do the centers of the tail lights. Though that is less important because they will be covered with a light that will be painted. But just for thoroughness there it is there's a uh, large light that covers these two portions and then a small light that covers the center the center is the white backup light and then the outside is the reds and that is uh that's that those are done so now i'll get set up and we'll do the wheels okay so this is this is always uh, very, this is very tedious work <laughs> and a little unnerving um, because one stray brush stroke, I hope my big head isn't in the way, but I need to be able to see to do this. So I'm basically just painting the little black triangle portion in the middle. And trying very hard not to get black paint on the chrome anywhere. And thus far I have been successful. Though I have just totally jinxed myself. The more of these I do, the better I get at it. So that's not bad. I'll go back and I'll chrome the lug nuts after. Um, but there's two of them done. 
And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest off camera. And uh, you know, the other thing that helps tremendously is these big magnifiers. Uh, these help uh, tremendously. So I'm going to get back to it and uh, I'll bring you back when they are completed. Okay, the wheels are now, uh, the blacks are, the black parts are done. So now I am going in with my little fine chrome pen. I'm just putting a little dab of chrome on each lug nut. Because we got chrome lugs on this baby. Gives a nice contrast. And that'll look good on that wheel, on that car. And the 3D print of these wheels is very nice. Um, it was very easy to do the uh, to do the black portions of the rim. It was recessed very well. It was molded very well. A lot, of, a lot of trouble. A lot of times, I shouldn't say molded. It was printed and designed very well by Andre. Um, basically, what happens when these are injection molded and through model kits sometimes the wheel isn't as clean as it needs to be and and the less detail in the wheel um you know the harder it is for you to detail uh, these things are super duper clean plus a lot of wheels come pre-chromed in model kits and when you strip the chrome off you have to be sure that you strip all the chrome off and all of the stuff otherwise the wheel is kind of not clean it gets dirty um, and then sometimes even if you clean all the chrome off, the wheel is still dirty, but the 3D printed wheels, um, you get a tremendous amount of detail and it's very easy to, uh, to work with, you know, the recesses are deep and well-defined. It's easy to get your brush in. Um, those lug nuts are very high up, very easy to, to detail. So those are good. So now... We're going to prepare the tires because I want white letters. The last time I did white letters, I used uh, my airbrush stencils, which I got from a nice gentleman down in Brazil. This time I'm going to use decals. I recently scored some decals off of eBay. It's my first time using uh, their decals. Uh, but they look really nice. And uh, you get a couple of cars worth here for not a lot of money. I had to order some, uh, one, two, three, four. I had to order some um, bird decals because I recently got um, Jimmy Flintstone's resin Firebird conversion to take the modern Camaro and turn it into a, what a modern Firebird might look like if they still made it. And so I needed some birds, so I ordered some uh, some hood decals, and uh, and I saw that this particular seller can't remember their name something red lines decals 164 red line decals on uh, on ebay and um so we're gonna give them a test and see how they do i'm gonna do them two at a time because i don't know how fast they'll go off and uh, and they didn't give me these like i bought these you know I'm giving some free advertising out there you know white letter decals are hard to find um you know and if this guy's got them if these work good and you're going to see right now if they work good. Um, if these work good, then, uh, hey, you know, more power to him. He's making decals for the model industry. White letter tire decals are hard to find. Uh, that was why I bought those airbrush stencils. So that I could uh, airbrush white letters. Whoa! Are these not water transfer? Oh! You have to cut them. Oh. Well, that is an extra step. So apparently, um, apparently in the, I, again, this is probably my fault for not reading the directions. Apply the decals as you have with other, cut the decal out carefully. Yep. Cut the decals out carefully. And otherwise, you're going to get an entire sheet of decals. So now the question is, can I save that? Well, first of all, the only way I'm going to be able to save that, if at all, is with a brand new blade. So we're going to get a brand new blade out. Time changes blade anyway. 
yeah, good suggestion for all you new model builders out there. You know, don't try and be stingy with the blades. You know, you can get a hundred of these guys for peanuts and uh, a fresh blade all the time. I change blade every kit and sometimes more frequently. Uh, and every time I come across something like this, uh, new blade time. Yeah. So I need to be very gentle with this because this is already loose. And for the next one, I'll read the directions. And I'll make sure that I trim the decal. There we go. I'll trim it more closely when I'm working with uh, a dry one. So let's see, am I saving it? Yes, I'm saving it. Well, this one anyway. And what I'll do is we're going to have, um, obviously, we're going to have a lot of carrier film on here. And uh, that's not going to look good. So what I'll do is I'll spray a little dull coat over these after they dry. But that looks good. I'm liking that. Decals holding up to the mark fit. Not bad. Not bad. I have to say I was surprised when the whole sheet moved. Didn't expect that. But hey, this is what happens when you're filming live. And, uh, and I don't edit stuff out. You know, I make mistakes just like everybody else. And, uh, and if you can learn from my mistakes that I make on camera, then hey, that's fine. I don't profess to be the perfect model builder. There's no such thing as a perfect model. I don't think that uh, a perfect model exists. And if you strive for the perfect model, you'll never finish a kit. You have to do the best that you can. Be proud of what you accomplish and what you achieve. Learn every something new, every kit, and keep moving forward. That's what I do. And I have a grand old time doing it. And, you know, no kit I make is perfect. There are blemishes here and there on my models. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a computer. I'm not a, a, uh, a contest builder. And I really don't care to be, to be honest. In fact, if there's a competition or what they call a build-off, I uh, typically don't participate. I will, uh, I will participate in group builds? Absolutely. Everybody wants to get together and build a kit and, like, have fun together. Like, that's totally cool, and I'm down. And that looks fantastic. And uh, these are good decals. The white is clear and crisp. All right, this guy's good. So uh, so there's the model number, I think, of these BF Goodrich Radial TA 164 Redlines decals. And, again, I got them off eBay, and they weren't a lot of money. And uh, And that looks... That looks good. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go online and get some more of these bad boys. Um, because I like the way they look. I like my airbrushing white letters, too. That works out well for me. Can't believe I'm able to save this. Again, the benefits of a new blade. If I had tried to do this with the old blade, these would have ripped and tore. And that would have been the end of it. And I would have wasted two tires worth of decals. But a new blade is the way to go. There we go. I should be able to get this radial TA off of there. Yep, there it is. Look at how crisp that white is. These are good decals. I could never print decals this good. I've experimented with decal printing. It is an art um, that I'm just not very good at. Uh, I, I've printed some decals and experimented with it. And, uh, you know, I so I have a lot of respect for these guys that do these decals and sell them online. And, uh, and they're good decals. I have a lot of respect for their craft because it is not easy, I don't think, to print decals. 
especially good ones. And now that I know that these are so, I'm looking forward to using those birds when I build that Jimmy Flintstone resin firebird. I'm not sure when that's going to be, but it'll be sometime. Last one is always going to be difficult. That's Murphy's Law. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Drop it on there. There we go. Yeah, these decals are great. I'm a fan. There is a lot of carrier film on there, but you know what? It doesn't look that bad. A little, little dull coat shot over the tire. Take care of that. Seal it in. I like to do that anyway because it seals it in nice. Look at those tires. Those tires look fantastic. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So now on the next two, we're going to do it correctly. And uh, this time... First, let's dry this up a little bit. There we go. So this time, I am going to cut them out while they are dry. This will be infinitely easier and allow me to cut in a lot closer to the white letters. There we go. There we go. Not perfect, but hey, carrier film is clear. And I'm going to dull coat over it anyway. So you won't see any imperfections in my round curve. And it's an extra step, but for a good tire decal, it's worth it. Obviously, other you know kit decals, you just get the letters off. This might be uh, this might yield a better result anyway, to be honest, because you can trim the carrier film to the size that you want. So if you wanted to work with them a little bit bigger, if it makes it easier for you, you could make them a little bit bigger. Kit decals, you're only getting the letters and a little bit of carrier film. You don't have any control over that. And so there goes that one. Love that new razor blade. Just cuts right through. Fresh blades are good. And as just as I said that, come across one where I didn't push down hard enough. There we go. And there. Ta-da. Where'd the water go? Here's the water. So now we'll just dip them in there. Swish them around. And it doesn't take long. Uh, you know, and he says room temperature water in his instructions. They come loose real easy. They slide real easy. And the white uh, is really good. It's a, it's a very clear, bold, crisp white. Because uh, white sometimes on decals washes out, especially if you're putting it over a dark color. Obviously, you're putting on tires. So, uh, and everybody's going to be putting them on black tires. So, so these are good decals in my book. Yep, comes right off. Nice and easy. Look at that. Good stuff, good stuff. So let's have a radial TA. There we go. Looks marvelous. Oh, these are gonna look so good on this car. I am a believer that the tires and wheels make a model. Well, paint job too. But if you've got good looking tires and wheels, on a model kit, you know, it looks real good on the shelf that way. 
um if the wheels and tires let the car down then you know so i always focus on my wheels and tires i always make sure my wheels and tires really look nice and wheels and tires are also one of the first things i build i get very excited about wheels and tires and uh it's one of the first things i do when I get a kit, especially if it's got cool wheels and tires, a lot of those Fujimi enthusiast kits, they come with such beautiful wheels. Um, and a lot of times they don't need anything except being taken off the sprue and, and put put in the tire. Um, but still, you know, it's one of the first things I do because I just love it. So then uh, here's a sneak peek at what we're going to be dealing with here. Let's see if I can get that in there. And again, I'll shoot a dull coat over those uh, white letters to make them look uh, uniform, the coating, the, the sheen. But, uh, you know, that's what we're going to have on the car. And uh, that's a good result right there. So wheels and tires in the book. Okay, so I just went back and uh, looked up the guy who did these tire decals. I wanted to make sure I got it right. He's actually Second Chance Redlines scredlines.com i got them off of ebay um i'll go check out his website right now on his on his youtube on his uh yeah youtube on his ebay store he's out of stock on these tire decals so i just reached out to him to see if he could make some more uh because i'll take five more sheets for me and then if he wants uh i told him i'm going to mention him on the channel so he might want to print some more um because good good tire decals are hard to find you know and hey i'll spread the word if there's a product i like you know i'm not greedy i don't have to be reimbursed or given something for free you know if there's something that can help my viewers hey let's do it up but i ordered these from him for my uh jimmy flintstone resin firebird that goes on the modern camaro um i i like that i've got a couple of them here i plan on doing a couple of these firebirds um and uh, and so I needed the Trans Am decals, and these are sets that he sells on on eBay in quarter scale, um, and they're they're beautiful. And if these go on as good as those tire decals, I'm set. Um, so anyway, I wanted to mention him because I you know I think he's got a good product here, and uh, I just hope he can make more of those tire decals. So uh, so we'll find out, and I'll uh, I'll report back when I hear back. So uh, time to get back to work. Okay, so this is turning into quite the saga. So I found out that his website, scredlines.com, is where you should go. Uh, he has a much larger selection there. The prices are less because he doesn't have to cover the eBay costs. And, uh, and you can set up an account and you can make purchases and it's wonderful. So, and, and he appears to have many more tire decals there. So, uh, so I'm going to his website and placing my order. Uh, if you like these tire decals, uh, give him a shot. Check them out. All right, back to work. Okay, off camera, I have applied the stripes to the hood. Um, you can see there's a very, very thin strip up the middle. And how I did that is um, I saw a trick that some guys do online uh, for low rider paint jobs. They tape two razor blades together or attach two razor blades together in a knife. So I now have a, a special knife that has um, two razor blades in it. And then with the two razor blades next to each other, you just run it down a piece of tape. And what that does is it cuts you a super thin little tiny piece of tape. And that is how I got that center stripe to look so good uh, with that yellow frog tape that I use that you can see in the left side of the picture there. Um, I just cut a really super thin stripe, airbrushed the stripes on, and that was it. Now I am just applying chrome pen to the chrome trim around the hood. It was a little tricky, uh, but again, the way it 3D printed, and, and 3D printing in general, I'm finding that the parts are so precise and so clean. So when there's a, a line or a molded part, well, it's not molded, it's printed, but when there's a, like, um, detail work, comes out very, very detailed so that it's very easy to do. So the chrome trim on the hood is now on. Now I'm going to do the uh, headlight bezels, and the uh, there's a little tiny piece of chrome trim around the fenders that, that wrap up around the edges which i'm getting in right now you can see i also masked off and did the black stripes down the side of the body and uh and that's going to wrap up video number two in the 3d printed 1972 ford maverick grabber video series i want to thank you for watching i hope you're enjoying this build i am enjoying this build this build was a lot of fun and come on back next week where we will finish up video number three 
And that will be the completion of the kit. We'll do the completed slideshow. Go ahead and click that like and subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. And feel free to send me some comments, questions. I love to hear from you guys. Also, check me out on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. All is Angelo's Workbench. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.